Good evening, everybody. If we could uh, make our way to our spots and stand in the house of the Lord tonight. There's a wonderful presence of the Lord in this place tonight. Amen? In college, before every game, our coach would take us out to left field and he would give us a speech or a motivational speech. But there's one thing that he would always say to us. This is the most important game of your life. It may be against a nobody team, but this was the most important game because this was the game where you can make a difference. This was the game where you could do something for a teammate to better them. This is the most important church service of your life so far. You couldn't pray. We can't praise anymore last Sunday. We can't praise yet this Sunday, but you can praise them tonight. If you need the Holy Ghost, you can receive it tonight. It may be a Wednesday, but if you need a healing, it is in the place tonight. The Lord is in this place, and there's nothing too hard. There's nothing too big. There we're going to go into prayer tonight. We have much we need to pray for. But the Lord's going to move. He may not answer everyone, but I believe He's going to do something tonight. I believe there's going to be, there's going to be needs met. Amen? Amen? Any prayer requests on this side? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Brother G.L. Yes, sir. Here in the middle, Sister Leanne. Yes, ma'am. Sister Crystal. Definitely, definitely. Sister Eloise. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Sister Jean. Brother Derek. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anybody else in the middle? Here on my left. Brother David. Yes, sir. Sister Maria. Yes, ma'am. Sister Jess. Definitely. Definitely. Sister Nadine. Yes, ma'am. Sister Lacey, we will, we will. Let's remember, brother, brother Danny. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anybody else? Platform, brother Richard. Yes, sir. Sister Kim. We will. Sister Mary. The Lord's about to do something. There's about to be some prayers answered. Pray with me tonight. Lord, we love you. There's none beside you. Stretch forth the heavens and the earth alone. Beside you, there's no equal. He who hath an ear, let him hear. Lord, I pray that we don't block out your voice tonight. You're speaking to us tonight, Lord. Your spirit is moving us tonight, Lord. Let it move us into worship. Let it move us into praise tonight. And Lord, I'm praying for healing to come to this place. Lord, healing and miracles are normal for an, uh, an apostolic church, Lord. It, it is normal. There's nothing out of the ordinary about it. And Lord, I'm praying for every cancer, every case of COVID, every pain, every joint that may may hurt, Lord, everything. I'm praying for healing in, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for unity to come to our homes, continue to work on our prodigals. Lord, draw our families closer together. Lord, I pray that our lights will shine brightest in our immediate relationships. Lord, you must increase and we must decrease. Lord, I rebuke any competitive spirit, Lord, and I pray that we are for one another and we have the mentality that we want to see the one beside us do more and more. Lord, I pray that in the name of Jesus, the anointing oil would flow through this place, Lord, that it would flow and bring unity as it flowed down the beard of Aaron, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, bring us closer to you tonight. Lord, I pray that we can receive your word 
Let it fall on good soil, Lord, and let there be a liberty just to praise you and to be in your presence tonight. And Lord, let us be ready for a manifestation of your presence in this place, Lord. It's in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that we pray these things. Amen.
like you there's none beside you lord your praise shall continually be in my mouth hallelujah hallelujah the lord's always speaking he spoke through the wise men through a star they they were known for looking up at the sky they were known for looking at the stars or quote unquote astrology and the lord speaks through them to what they they can comprehend the lord's always speaking to us there's something about being in the presence of in the present moment with the Lord, I, not too many days ago, I was on the highway and as I was driving, I was listening to Brother Lee Stone King preach and I just felt an urge in my spirit just to pay attention for a moment. And about 150, 200 yards ahead of me, a semi started to swerve over in the lane and about ran another car off the road. Long story short, there was no wreck. The cars went on past, but I hurry up and got around and I couldn't help but think if I couldn't just live in the moment and if I just hear the voice of the Lord lead and guide me. I got around that truck, nothing happened, but the Lord's hand was with me. The Lord's always speaking and he's speaking to somebody tonight. You don't know how you got here. You've been battling, but you're here. You're here and the Lord is for you and his, his hand is upon you and he loves you and he's for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you for what we feel in this place tonight. You're moving. You're moving, Lord. Lives are being changed tonight. Amen. We're going to give you a chance to give if we can get the ways to give. Thank you. We have GiveLify, PayPal, at, uh, available at RiverbendPentecostals.com. Cash and checks can be mailed to Riverbend Pentecostals, P.O. Box 477, New Madrid, Missouri, 63869. The gold pants are for tithing, the wood is for offering, and if we could get the prayer on the board. Something happens every time we say this, amen? Let's say it with faith. Upon the authority of your word I have given, and it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received. My whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in, and I am blessed going out, and all that I do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen.
want you to just praise the Lord one more time tonight. Hallelujah, Lord. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm thankful for our praise team, amen. They do such a wonderful job letting the anointing work through them. Oh, hallelujah. And I'm thankful for Sister Heidi and Sister Scarlett behind the cameras. They do a wonderful job. We don't forget them. Nothing goes unrecognized, amen. amen. We're better together, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. You may be seated. Children, the children can come forward. Hallelujah. Children's Church. Sister Crystal, if you want to lead them on back. I love seeing the smiles on the young, young children's faces. Amen. Amen. River been ignited. And we'll turn this thing on over to Brother GL. I know he's got something wonderful for us. Amen. Amen. Well, Glory. Did everybody get a handout that needs one? I heard somebody say no. Sister Sheila needs one. Sister Amanda needs one. Uh, man, I was hoping y'all would do so good on the handouts that I'd have to fire Brother Shannon and Brother Ronnie. I still might do it. This will be my story to tell. Uh, they had to go to Jeff City for some recovery. Uh, well, I'm not sure exactly. I don't want to call them lobbyists. They were just there because the state is really trying to invest in faith-based recovery. Amen. It does work. It works. Um, we got a lot to cover tonight, so we need to get into the Word. I'm, I don't have much faith. Thank you, brother. I don't have much faith that I'm going to get everything covered tonight, but I've been surprised before. Uh, so... Um, let's get it right into the word, the bait of Satan, chapter number eight, and I, I hope you've read it, and I hope you've, you've had time, we haven't, uh, I was gone, Brother David taught, did an incredible job, then we canceled due to the weather, and then we're, so we've been three weeks with this thing in the crock pot, and I don't know, but in my experience, you let something cook, slow cook, for a long time, it gets better and better and better, Brother Terrence. And uh, now the only thing I know about that is this one ain't been cooking the whole time because I got in it and looked at it some more and added some more stuff to it. And uh, so I, I've been excited about this. And, and I don't mind telling you, we could have done online church last Wednesday, but I wanted to teach this and I wanted to teach it with all of us here because I think it's important for the interaction and I think it's important for the uh, receptivity to the word. And then, of course, those of you that are interested can go back home and watch it again. Now, I'm not going to tell you everything yet, but I'm going to tell, I will tell you that God is doing some great things here at the Riverbend and really doing some great things over the internet through our online congregation. So uh, we all, as always, we want to thank all of those that are watching with us online. And some of them, some of them are more faithful than some of us. Yeah, they didn't like it too much. We canceled last Wednesday. And I heard there was some of us out in the street with pom-poms and a miniskirt on saying, Go, Pastor GL. Go, Pastor GL. I'm just teasing, but it wasn't far from that. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26 and 27. God's going to really minister in this place tonight. Get ready to receive it. Make sure you stay focused. If you get sleepy, that doesn't mean I'm a bad teacher or you're a bad person, but get them walk around. All right? Do it right up here so everybody knows what you're walking around for. No, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. Hebrews chapter 12, 26 and 12. I will tell you, I probably felt more unction from heaven preparing this lesson than I have heretofore, meaning 
this has been the most potent one that I have felt, the witness of the Spirit. And uh, I think that even perhaps it was the will of God that we had to wait a couple of weeks. So uh, whose voice, of course, talking about the Lord, then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more signifying the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Now, in the last lesson, if you will recall, we saw that Simon Peter had a different level of revelation than the rest of the disciples. You remember Matthew chapter 16, Jesus said, Who do men say that I am? That some say thou art Jeremiah, or Elias, or one of the prophets. But whom say ye that I am? They all answered the rumor mill. Everybody knew what everybody else was talking about, but only one answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that was Peter. And we learned that it was in no small part due to the fact that Peter had an unshakable and I meant to say it like that, an unshakable desire to pursue Jesus Christ. He was the one stepped out of the boat. He stayed with him the longest at Calvary. Peter really desired to be with the Lord, and it was reflected in his life. Now, I want you to hear this. I think this is important. I've said it before, but I want you to hear it. Peter really thought he was who he said he was. Peter really thought that he was sold out and committed to Jesus Christ and his mission more than anybody else. He really thought that. You with me? He really thought that he was who he said he was. Now, while his efforts were noble and everything he said was good, it was built on the wrong foundation. It was built on pride, self-will, and self-confidence. Also fleshly ideals, fleshly desires, and I want you to think about this one, fleshly effort. Peter was going to do this, and even in one place, Brother Marcus, he said, the Lord said they're going to crucify me. I mentioned that to you on Sunday, and Peter said, ain't happening on my watch. And the Lord said, get thee behind me, Satan. And Peter said, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. I'm still going to step in, ain't letting you get killed. Okay? So, but it was, it was a good idea. Now, I want us to think about this. We are going to have to, in our walk with God, begin to segue from being fueled by self-will, self-confidence, pride, and especially self-effort. For instance, you cannot think, I'm not getting an answer from God, so I better work harder. I better fast more. I better pray more. I better give more. I better do more. Because God's not answering, it must mean I need to do more. You are not God. Okay? And your efforts will not accomplish anything more than to get you wore out. It will be God's will done. Hear me. Our efforts must be to align ourselves with the will of God. And the most paramount way we know that, how, what's the most foolproof way to align yourself with the will of God? What do you think? Word of God. Very simple. This right here stands sure when nothing else does. When kingdoms fall, the word stands. When presidents change, the word stands. When the stock market's up, the word stands. When the stock market's down, the word stands. you got to fall in love with the word of God. It's forever settled in heaven. Okay. Now, Jesus is at the Last Supper. Now, this is going to be funny, Brother Blake, all right? So I want you to be ready because I'm fixing to start messing with folks. That's one of the reasons why I've been so happy about getting the opportunity to teach this. 
Jesus is at the Last Supper. One of his disciples, he tells them, one of you is going to betray me. You're going to sell me out. One of you are a traitor. You're not really with us. Let's not even think about that one for right now. He said in Luke 22 and 21, but behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is on the table. It's one of you fellas. Truly the Son of Man goeth as it was determined, meaning I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to keep following my path. It, that's, how, that's what I was born for, okay? But then he says, but woe unto that man by whom he's betrayed. And the disciples begin to talk amongst themselves who is the bad dude. Which one of us is the guy that's going to betray him? Now I want you to notice something. I'm in verse 21 and I'm in verse 22. But very soon, everybody say very soon the conversation segued into an old refrain that the disciples have been hashing out since they first got called. And it's very revealing because anybody know that's been in elements class knows that your communication tells who you are. Okay? Luke 22 and 24. Everybody say three verses. That's how long the disciples begin to talk about who is going to betray Jesus. All right, for three verses, they're talking about, man, who could it be? Who could it be? Man, I don't think it's me, but who could it be? And it's not long, Brother Terrence, just a few minutes till the conversation has changed. And there was also a strife among them, which of them should be accounted the greatest. You see the picture? Anybody not see the picture? Hang with me, Brother Larry. I might be all over the place tonight. But don't think I wasn't watching you preach the other day, and you was too. Y'all, are you with me? What's happening here? The Lord has got his disciples gathered around the table, Brother David, and he busts this bombshell out. One of you going to sell me out. One of you are going to turn me out. One of you are going to betray me. One of you are going to give me up to my enemies. Hold up. And they begin to discuss it for a few minutes. Man, who could that be? Surely he's mistaken. Maybe he's got us mixed up with somebody else. But just in a matter of a few minutes, the conversation changes from who's going to do it to which one of us is the greatest. Oh, how dare they do that? Don't be sitting up on your ivory tower looking down at the disciples when we're guilty of the same thing often. We can't figure out who the bad guy is, but we know who the best one is. You're looking at him. Uh Uh-huh. We don't really really know who the bad guy is. We don't really know who's going to betray the Lord. So we can't figure... Man, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Here's how I see it. All right? Here's how I see it as the pastor of the River Bend Pentecostals. I think it would have went something like this. Well, everybody knows that I'm not the one to betray him because I'd never do something like that because I come to every service. I'm at every work day. I give to every cause and Well, I've just proven that there's no way that I'm the bad guy. There's no way I'm the betrayer because who could be as faithful and committed as me and want to do something like that? Well, I never. Why is it that when we come in contact with a question we don't know the answer to, we replace it with self-righteousness? I don't really know what's happening. I don't really know where the Lord's going. But I know one thing. For I am a jolly good fellow. Okay? It crops its head up here all the time. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I don't know who's going to betray him. The truth of the matter is, Sister Crystal, they didn't even know what that meant. All right? But they knew... We've been arguing and fussing, and you know what's about to happen, Sister Maria? We're going to find out who the best really is because we know there's one that ain't the best. We're going to really find out who the best is. Why is it that our default, if the preacher says, we got to stop lying on Thursdays, 
that our first response is to say, I never told a lie in my life on Thursday. <laughs> Ain't me, bless God. Okay? Why is it? That, but here's the deal, okay? All this reveals, are y'all ready to get shook up a little bit now? All this reveals the standard by which they've been living. And they would be surprised to know that extolling your righteous virtues is not spiritual. But carnal. Because it's no different than the world. It's no different than the world. What happens when somebody don't like what you're preaching? But they can't do anything about it. You know what they do? Not just turn you off, Brother David. What do they do? What you say? They, they begin to attack you. Because when they couldn't do nothing about what Jesus was saying and what Jesus was doing and it was wise and he kept asking questions they didn't have the answer to, but more likely he's asking questions that if they answer the question, they're really saying, I believe in you. So they played dumb and wouldn't answer nothing and they went into ta attack mode. So since we know that that's how the flesh works, come on, stay with me now. Since we know how the flesh works, we're going to cut them off at the pass and start listing all of our good stuff before they attack us because we took it personal. And the way we fight is how. Do you honestly believe? I want you to hang with me. Am I making sense? Do you honestly believe that it's the will of God that when somebody attacks you, for something you believe or something you preach or a conviction or a truth in the word that the way to defend it is by talking about how good you are. Why is that not the right thing? Think about the word. Oh, because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God. And when I'm talking about how much I give, when I'm talking about how faithful I am, when I'm talking about how much I read the Bible, when I talk about how often I come to church, all I'm doing is fighting with carnal weapons because you don't even have to be powerful to come to church all the time, to give all the time, to be nice to people. You don't even have to be operating in the Holy Ghost to do that. And Isaiah said very powerfully and very clearly that all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. It means nothing. So that's where Peter's at. That's why, Brother David, every time a conflict rises, Peter says, everybody knows I'm with you. Everybody knows where I stand. Everybody knows if there's a betrayer, it's amongst y'all. It ain't me but he's making a carnal declaration. Does that make sense to you? Because, but what's happening then is, Sister Maria, I'm trying to fight a spiritual battle with carnal weapons. And guess what's going to happen when I do that? I lose. Because the Lord does not say, oh, I'm sorry. The enemy has come against you. And I forgot how good you were. So since you reminded me, I'm going to whoop the enemy for you. Lord, don't roll like that anyway. We're learning through the bait of Satan that sometimes that opposition, God's going to use it. So if we're aware, as we should be, then we should come to a place where we don't even think about lifting ourselves up all right. Okay. Who's that? Yes, ma'am.
It is. It is. But that's the point, is we've not yet learned to use mighty weapons. So we have to keep resorting to fleshly weapons. And you realize you're fighting the enemy the same way you fight your friends. Say, what do you mean by that? I mean when a husband and wife start getting in a little deal, they begin to, it, it no matter how it starts, well, you do this and you do this, well, you do this and you do this, and it becomes personal. And then we got to say, I didn't do that. That's just the way you saw it. I ain't, I ain't said that to you since last Thursday, two months ago, because I'm keeping track. Because I know you always be bringing up everything I do. So I know I ain't done that. We got to get away from that mentality. Are y'all with me right now? We got to get away from a mentality that says, when I get good enough, I'm going to win some battles. I would submit to you that five seconds after you learn how good the Lord is, you can start winning battles. I don't think you heard me because we still in performance mode. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Well, the disciples were too. How'd that work out for Peter? Jesus said to the disciples, he said, somebody's going to betray me. That's a big deal, ladies and gentlemen. It's his inner circle. It's the 12 disciples. It's his main men. And one of you is a fake. What would happen if I said that right now? Somebody in here is a hypocrite. What would you automatically go to? In your Brother Terrence and Sister Dana are going to be faithful. And Sister Sheila's going to be faithful. Sister Sheila's going to come and testify that her neighbor hit the Powerball and because she mowed their yard for the last 12 years, they're going to split it with her. And Brother Terrence and Sister Dana are going to say, why ain't that happened to us? We must not be doing something right. Or maybe God's not acknowledging it. And they don't know that they've been driving a car with a blowed head gasket for six months and God kept it from messing up. You see what I'm saying? They don't know that they've had a nail stuck in their tire and been driving 110 because they were running late to work. Come on, somebody. And that tire was ready to blow out, but the Lord kept them safe. Uh, because we measuring on greenbacks instead of blessings. Greenbacks are carnal. Bless, woo, Holy Ghost. Blessings can't be measured. Huh? Is everybody with me? I know I'm digging here right now for a reason. I'm kind of out of the bait of Satan just a minute, but I'm where we're living Guarantee you, something goes wrong in your life, you automatically begin to think, what have I done to make it happen? And we've learned through the bait of Satan that God uses that stuff to perfect us. But you know what's happening tonight, Brother David? The Holy Ghost is saying, and I'm fixing to prove it by the word, the Holy Ghost is saying some of us are not getting it yet. Everything that's going wrong in your life don't have, does not have somebody to blame. Some of the stuff going wrong in your life is because you got some jacked up stuff in your life that God needs to get it out. And it won't go if the pressure doesn't ramp up. I'm going to prove that to you. Are you ready for me to prove it to you? Look at here. Jesus told the disciples in the middle of their, their brag fest, they're all standing up and saying, bye, 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 I'm the man. Je Jesus said, the way of the world is, everybody knows who the elite are. I'm paraphrasing. He said, because the elite exercise authority and every now and again, they stoop down to bless the lower class but then they go right back up to where they belong. He said, but that's not how it's going to be with you. You understand what I'm saying? Every now and again, the elite will slum a while. But then they go back to being elite. 
He said, you're going to be elite, but you're going to be doing it from a different perspective. As a matter of fact, you're going to be doing it from the same perspective as me who came from heaven and stooped myself to become a servant. You can read it in Luke 22, 25 through 27. Now, Simon Peter had received what might be considered an abundant revelation of who Jesus was. It's possible, Brother David, that Simon Peter did have a revelation nobody else had. It's possible. Matter of fact, I think it's probable. Okay? Now, he knew who Jesus was, but where was the problem? With himself. He did not know who he needed to be in Jesus Christ. He knew who, he, oh, help me right now. He, am I doing okay tonight? I feel like I'm all over the place. He knew who he needed to be in the eyes of the world. A swordsman, a loyal soldier. I'll stand with you. I'll fight for you. I'll die with you. Matter of fact, when everybody else leaves you, I'll be here. Okay, that's who he knew he needed to be. That ain't who knew the Lord needed him to be at all. That's not even close to who. The Lord didn't need a champion. Think about that, Brother David. The Lord said, listen to me, you dumb boy. While the bloody ears laying on the street. I mean, the Lord didn't talk like that, but sometimes I feel like that for the Lord, so I'm just going to speak for him. Let me tell you something, dummy. Don't you know if I won't help I can call down 12 legions of angels right now and they'll defend me. Oh, but, but I'm the man to defend you. See, I got the sword. I tried to fight the guy. And the Lord stooped down, picked up that ear, put it back on the boy and told Peter, mind your business. Because Peter was measuring with the wrong stick, Brother David. And the Lord knew, he done said, think about this. He said a while ago, Brother Blake, blessed art thou Simon Barjona. Flesh and blood didn't tell you that, but it's a revelation from heaven. Brother Larry, the problem never was with who God was. The problem was with who Peter was. And I'm gonna just take you, see you that one and raise you another one. Your problem ain't about who God is. Your problem is about who you are in his plan. Peter had built his house on a shaky foundation of self-will, personal confidence, and pride. Because I'm going to be faithful to every service, every prayer meeting. I'm going to give every service in the offering and I got COVID. Now what am I going to do? Think the Lord's surprised because they got COVID, Brother David? Think about it just a minute. You made all these promises. I'm going to be more faithful than anybody. And now I'm sick. Now, Jen, I get to say, well, I would have been, but something always messes me up. Is everybody with me tonight? Yeah. I hope you are. Look here. Jesus makes a powerful statement. He tells the disciples, one of you is going to betray me. He says, I want you to see this picture now. He tells the disciples, one of you is going to betray me. And the disciples start saying, who is it? And somehow, who is the bad guy turns into, I am the good guy. Right? All right, so they're having a fussing, throw down fit about who's the best. The Lord says, y'all got it all wrong. You're going to be powerful. You're going to have authority. You're going to be anointed. But I'm doing it so you can be a servant, not so you can be a warrior. I'm doing it because you can be beneath people and not have to reign over people. You can serve rather than saying, I'm the man. Now, then he says to Peter, now, he just told him somebody's going to betray me. Then he says to Peter, Simon, Simon, 
Behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Now that word sift, I want you to hear me. I felt this strong even before service. It means to sift, to shake in a sieve, and it figuratively, this is out of the dictionary, it figuratively means by inward agitation to try one's faith to the verge of overthrow. Here's what that means. Did I put that on your handout? I should have if I didn't. Yep, it's in the book. Oh, thank you. If they be reading their book, they get it. It means I'm going to cause you so much difficulty that you're not going to know if you're going or coming. And I'm going to get your head spinning so fast that you're going to get to the point to say, I quit. You're all right. Oh, I think it's the exact same thing. Exact same thing. Because when the Lord says Satan desired to have you, that really means Satan has petitioned me for you. It's the exact same principle. Okay? And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, Satan wants to sift you. Meaning, he wants to shake you. If you y'all, anybody want to read the very first verse on your handout? You got your handout? Somebody read me the very first line on the handout. That the things that cannot be shaken may remain. The devil wants to shake you. Here's what the... I know I feel like I'm preaching to you a whole lot. That don't mean nothing. I'm just over here. According to Hebrews chapter 12, the Lord is telling Peter, I'm fixing to let the devil do a job in your life. The devil wants to shake you. Somebody hear me in the Holy Ghost right now. But I'm not going to pray for the things that can be shaken because I want them gone anyway. But I'm going to pray. Look at, listen to me just a minute. I'm trying to hurry. I'm trying to hurry. I'm doing what I tell these guys not to do. I'm judging how good I'm doing out for how y'all are acting. And that's iffy. Okay? Yeah, I, I hope that's the truth, Brother David, and I thank you for that. And that's what I'm going to choose to thank. All right? Look here. Jesus did not tell Peter, I'm going to pray that the enemy can't get at you. He didn't rebuke the devil. And we already know he knows how to do that. Because in Matthew chapter number four, he told the devil, get out of here. Because it's written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. But he did say, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I've prayed for you that your faith fail not. Okay? I've prayed for you that your faith, there we go. Was that up there a while ago? <laughs> I've prayed for you that your faith fail not. That's one sentence. I'm establishing, the Lord is establishing, I'm interceding for you for the one thing I don't want shaken. Hear me now. And when thou art converted, that word converted means refreshed, renewed, restored, turned around, come back, delivered from the shaking. Come on, somebody. Amen. When the devil gets through with you, strengthen the brethren. Huh? That's what the Lord told him, didn't he? Jesus prayed for Peter's faith. 
but he did not pray against the shaken. He did not pray against the offense. Because there's some things in Simon Peter that needed to be shaken out. Self-will, pride, and self-confidence. There's some things that needed to be shaken out of Peter. Now I looked up when it says Jesus prayed. That word literally and in the new in, in the Greek lexicon, it is translated begged. I have begged for you. That word means, now hear me right now. That word means to feel pressing need because of lack. What does that mean? That means Jesus Christ felt the same need a beggar feels for money to survive because of what he saw missing in Peter's life. Does that make sense? He saw something lacking in Peter's life and he begged because of the feeling of Peter's lack. Okay. Jesus prayed with an urgency based upon his awareness of what Peter had and what Peter was missing. Peter's faith was enough, but what it wasn't all that Peter was relying on. He still held on to the riches of self-will, pride, and self-confidence. The faith was there, but the faith was being overwhelmed by the flesh. Something had to, oh, I wish I could teach tonight. Something had to happen in Peter's life to shake out the doo-doo so the good stuff could live. Yep. Yep. The Lord is telling him, I'm fixing to turn one around on the devil. He wants to shake, oh God help me right now. Somebody hear the word of the Lord. He wants to shake you till everything's gone. But I know that there's some things in you that won't be shaken. I know there's something down in you. I'm praying for you for it. I'm interceding for you. I'm begging for your faith. Because there's some arrogance in you that's got to go. There's some self-will in you that's got to go. There's some I can do it my way in you that's got to go. You want the right thing, but you're trying to do it the wrong way. And if you're going to go, that'll, that'll get you, you know, that'll get you through breakfast and lunch, but it won't take you all the way where I want you. You can go so far on your self-will, but you can't get all the way. That's why the Bible said all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You cannot get where God wants you to get carrying the baggage that you're carrying. Sometimes, sometimes, that baggage looks like your abilities. Okay. Are we all right? Okay. Jesus had a plan for Peter. I've preached. I will preach it yet again. Everyone that hears me right now. Here in the house, online now, or online tomorrow or the next day. Did y'all know we had over 1,300 views of Sunday service? Huh? Okay. We got lots of folks locking in to the river bend. We got to get it right. Because we're going to wake up here. Hear me right now. We're going to wake up here one day, and you're going to show up a few minutes late, and you ain't going to have a place to sit. It's going to happen. Hear me right now. It's going to happen. 
He put a powerful calling and a powerful blessing on Peter in Matthew 16. I'll give you the keys to the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Peter wasn't even ready for the blessing he had received. And when the enemy came against Peter, Jesus didn't try to stop it. He didn't try to stand in the gap and stop the enemy from coming. He just prayed for Peter's faith. He prayed for Peter's faith to stand the shaking. Peter was saying, I'll die with you. And ironically enough, guess what happened? He did. And that was ultimately the plan. But right now, hear me. Somebody hear me in the Holy Ghost. I'm there right now. Right now, Peter didn't have what it took to live up to God's plan for him. Let's talk about Judas versus Peter for a minute. Sure can. Yes. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. But the Lord, in a minute, we're fixing to talk about it. The Lord let him know you came through. You came through. Look here. Judas Iscariot betrayed the Lord. We know that. But he was a part of the 12 in every sense, he was there for the miracles. He was part of the traveling evangelism crusade. He was casting out devils, healing the sick. But Judas was never sold out. He always had a separate agenda. It was Judas when the woman comes with the alabaster box and breaks it that says, my goodness, what a waste. That could have been sold and given to the poor. That's a perfect example of the flesh trying to rise up and do the will of God. Everybody with one eye and half a brain knows Judas wasn't interested in doing nothing for the poor. Judas was out for Judas. But you know what was happening, Brother Terrence? Judas felt under conviction because he walked with the Lord day after day after day and this hoochie mama comes in off the street and breaks a box and begins to anoint the feet and the body of the Lord. And he sent her, well, look at her. I didn't do that. So in order to make me feel better, I'm going to have to make her feel bad. Sorry, outfit. He betrayed Jesus. Y'all ready for this? He betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, the price of a slave. In today's Figures, 18 bucks. Less than a $20 bill, he sold the Lord out. Peter had a backbone. He was strong as long as Jesus was present. But as soon as Jesus allowed himself to be taken captive, Peter lost his bravado. He did follow Jesus, but only at a distance. Peter had not yet learned to walk by faith and not by sight. You know why he was still hanging around? It was not because he believed the Lord was going to come through this. He believed he was going to get a chance to be the hero and save the day because that was his plan. Oh, you got to believe me. You got to believe me. Now, I don't want to be hurting nobody's feelings and stuff, but I'm going to tell you something. Some of us in the house... Some of us in the house right now, you need to be at recovery on Thursday nights. You know why? You need to be recover from wanting to be the hero. Codependency is pandemic proportions. It's hurting more people than any drug ever has. People want to save the day. They want to be a hero. They want to be God. 
You're not God. You're not the hero. Trust the Lord. Walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, Holy Ghost, help me. A young servant girl declares that Peter was one of them. And he quickly, remember chapter number seven, says don't do anything in a hurry. Don't be hasty. Very quickly, Peter said, no, I'm not. You got me mixed up. I'm not one of them. Then very quickly, somebody else says, I saw you with them. And Peter said, you're a liar. Got me mixed up, wasn't me. Then the third person says, oh, I know you're one of them. I saw you traveling with them. And Peter said, here, let me prove to you I'm not a follower of Jesus Christ. And he cussed her out. Let me tell you something. You curse and swear, you're not a Christian. Because Peter proved his last ditch effort to prove he was not a follower of Jesus Christ was to throw a cussing fit. Somebody ought to say amen about right now unless you want to go out of here and let her rip. As soon as you hear the rooster crow, for the second time, the Bible says he went away and wept bitterly. Why is Peter weeping? He knows he's failed. Yep. Let me tell you why he's weeping. Oh, no. I wasn't who I thought I was. I wasn't who I thought I was. Oh, no. Jesus was right. He saw, oh, Holy Ghost, help me right now. Jesus saw me like I really was all along. He knew where I was lacking at. He knew where I was weak at. He knew where I was messed up at. And I did exactly what he said I would do. Now, here you go, Jen. Here's some more answer for your question. What does it also show? when Peter weeps bitterly because he failed the Lord and he wasn't who he thought he was. What's it also show? He wasn't listening to the Lord because the Lord said, after you come through your mess, after you bounce, oh God, help me right now. After you bounce back from this, after you survive the shaking, Strengthen the brethren. You know what that means? That means the Lord had a plan to use Peter before he ever even failed his greatest failure. And his greatest failure didn't intimidate the Lord none. The Lord did not say, I got a big plan for you, but I'm going to change it if you mess up too bad. He gave him the whole plan, Brother David. He said, the devil wants to shake you, but I'm going to let him. But I'm going to pray that your faith doesn't fail. And when you come back, come on, everybody say, come back. Amen. When you come back, when you bounce back, when you survive the shaking, and you still have your faith. Peter didn't listen to what the Lord said. You want to know why, Brother Blake? Shaking wasn't over. He was still wrapped up in him. He was still ciphering everything on a carnal scale. I was the greatest. You said it right, Dave. Dave flashed up the L. I was the greatest yesterday, but today I'm the worst. I'm sorry. I'm pitiful. I'm no good. I'm useless. I'm a loser. Oh, my goodness. He just went from one extreme to the other of carnality. Come on. He went from Muhammad Ali to Charlie Brown. I mean, really. He went from the, the White House to the outhouse. Just like that. Because it was all about him. Then's when the shaking started. Listen to me right now. 
He said, when thou art converted. Brother Robbie brought to our attention the, the, the great prophet, the great man of the East, Job, who endured so much. But I'm going to bring you to another great man. You find him in Luke, the 15th chapter, and he's commonly known as the prodigal son. Why was he a great man? Huh? Because he came back. Huh? And what happened before he came back, Brother David? What'd you say, Mama? Oh! Oh, my goodness! He said, hold on a minute. This ain't where I belong. This ain't where I belong. What in the world was I thinking? You see, the pro the shaking, Peter didn't get it because he was wrapped up in himself. He didn't get it on the good side and he didn't get it on the bad side because what the shaking does is it brings you to yourself and you realize, hold on a minute. I was made for more than this. You should have kept reading. Huh? You should have kept reading. Look at here. Then the hog pen said when he came to himself. Peter had going to have a come to himself meeting. When thou art converted or when you come to yourself, strengthen the brethren. The, the word of God was first drowned out by Peter's self-will, self-confidence, and pride. Then it was drowned out by his failure. Huh? It was first drowned out by self-confidence, self-will, and pride. Or, is everybody with me? And then it was drowned out by his failure. The awareness of his failure came from the same place as his desire for success. Where was it all found at? Where was his desire for success found? In himself. I got the sword. I got the will. I got the commitment. I got the desire. Matter of fact, everybody, if y'all would just be honest, y'all know I'm the greatest. And all of a sudden, I'm the worst. You know something, Brother Terrence? I wish I would have just ran and hid. I'd have been better off not even coming, hanging around. Because now I, I'm, I was the only one that fought him with, fought him with a sword. I was the only one they said to give the keys to the kingdom. And now I'm the only one lying, lying, cussing and lying right around the courthouse. It's all about me. It's all about me. The shaking was going. The shaking was going. Peter desired to know Jesus. And he pursued that desire. Therefore, he had a foundation to fall back on when he failed. The word of God. The revealed word of God. Jesus, Judas, I'm fixing to quit after this. Judas never really desired to know Jesus. But he pursued his own agenda. And when he failed, he had nothing to fall back on. Peter had a word from God, even though he didn't quite get it. Judas had nothing because he was always pursuing his own agenda. Judas never sought a place of repentance with Jesus. Instead, he tried to use his former partners in crime as a platform for his repentance. He was going to fix it on a carnal level. Poor old dumb rascal. Think about it. You think about what was going through his mind when he waded back into the temple with that sack of money that Sister Ashley was a whole lot bigger walking away than it was coming back. You know something, Brother Robbie? He didn't want it no more. Matter of fact, he said, y'all take this back. I, I, don't want, I betrayed innocent blood. I didn't know it was going to be like this. I just thought I was going to get a little bit more gambling money. 
I thought I was just going to get a little bit more money to go bet on the ponies. I, I just thought I was going to get a little bit more to jingle in my pocket and all the senior readers would think I was all that. I didn't know that it was going to go this far. But you know something, Sister Crystal? He was lost. He had nowhere to turn. As messed up as Peter was, he still had somewhere to turn. And he was still listening. You know what he was listening for? The sound of his name to be called. Judas instead throws the money down at the feet of the priest. And in one final act of independence, his last attempt to do it his way, he went out to Akladama and hung himself. Rather than embracing humility and coming back to Jesus with a repentant heart, he decided to fix it his own way. Stand with me if you would. I'm not near about done, but I didn't think I would be. But somewhere in the back of your mind, I hope it begins to echo in you. Somewhere in the back of your mind, you got a word from God. Somewhere in the back of your mind, you heard from the Lord. But you've been trying to do it your way. If I can be good enough, if I can give enough, if I can come to prayer meeting enough, then I'll be good. You know, I prayed that to the Lord before, Sister Maria. I told the Lord, here's what I said. If you give me a chance, I'll prove to you that I'll stick. You know what I think the Lord did when I said that? Bald. You poor little dumb rascal. You don't get it. You ain't got nothing to do with me saving you except surrendering to me. You can't build a high enough, you can't build a high enough tower to get to heaven. Even after the flood, Brother Blake, they're trying to do it their way. And the Lord said, all you got to do is turn to me. That's why he said, come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. You know what the rest is from? Trying to carry the load yourself. Pride, self-will, self-confidence. Next Wednesday, we'll finish chapter number eight. Probably review a little bit, but I want you to know the plan of God for you hasn't changed. And the shaking is simply to get rid of the things stopping you from seeing him like he is. There's some folks in here tonight, you've been going through hell on earth. You've been clawing and scratching and fighting and pushing and shoving to try to make it. Let me tell you, Get your eyes off the flesh. Get your eyes on the Lord. And tell him, I've messed up. You know something, Brother Blake? We don't have no problem repent of getting drunk. We got no problem repent of getting high. We got no problem to repent of fornicating. We got no problem to, re to repent of, of all these bad sins. But how about come to the Lord and say, God, I'd like you to forgive me for trusting in me more than I trusted in you. I'd like you to forgive me for walking around with this big banner about me instead of carrying around this about you. Because see what's happening, Brother David. Is, I'm not being ugly to anybody. I'm not demeaning or belittling your issues or your problems. But it ain't no big deal for the Lord to deliver you from drugs or alcohol or sex or any of those other things. But to deliver you from trusting in the flesh into trusting in him, that's a J-O-B. Because here's the deal, Brother Cody. Everybody in here tonight, from the newest worshiper to the most seasoned saint has seen themselves somewhere in this Bible study. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
But Brother David, the plan hasn't changed. The promise hasn't changed. There's just a whole lot of shaking going on. And when it's over, when you come back, when you bounce back, when you turn around, when you're delivered, when you make it through, strengthen the brethren. You know what that means? I'm going to teach it next time, but you know what that means? That means I've been through some junk. And I know there's some of y'all going through some junk. And you know what, Sister Sheila? I made it. And you know what I want to tell you how to do? How to make it. So come go with me. So come go with me. I've been through some stuff. I got some scars. I got some bruises. I got some reminders. But when the shaking was over, you know what I had left? My faith. And you know what Jesus said? If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And our carnal mind will say, I ain't got nothing left. But the Lord will say, I didn't say you weren't going to have anything left. But if the only thing you got left is your faith, if the only thing you got left is your faith, you're going to make it. But I need this and I need that. No, we don't need anything if we ain't got the Lord. But, be, but better than yet, but that, Brother Terrence, I got to know who I am in him, not who I am amongst you all. Because when I brag on me, I ain't doing that for the Lord. I'm doing that for you. When I say I'm no good, I ain't doing that for the Lord. You know why I ain't doing that for the Lord? He done been knowing that. He knows how bad I need him. And he knows what I can do. And he knows that up till now, I ain't even scratched the surface on my potential. But I'm going to when I come out of this. Anybody agree with me in the Holy Ghost? Hmm? Agree with me in the Holy Ghost? Thank you for coming tonight. Apply the word. Take it home. Write on your paper. Read your book. Read it again. If you never bought a book, buy it. You can get them cheap. Highest price I'm finding is ten, eleven dollars a piece. Hobby Lobby. They sell them cheap. You have to fight all of the desperate housewives. <laughs> that's a true story. That's not a joke. <laughs> Don't try to get in line in front of a lady that's got twelve shelves, four pictures, and six little furry animals that she bought at Hobby Lobby. You will get run over. And don't try to step up to the line and get too close to her till she pulled out her coupon of the day. Y'all know what I'm talking about? How many of y'all be? My wife, she pulls her coupon up and we're like 15th in line. I got it ready. Thank you for coming tonight. I love every one of you. I can't wait to see what you got. Brother Larry, if you don't mind, cut the camera off for just a second. Y'all come back now. We love you. We'll see you next time.